Hey guys, uh, chapter number 23, Gauss law, question number 3, okay, question 3, not problem 3, question 3. Uh, we also have a diagram here. Figure shows in cross section a central metallic ball, uh, two spherical metallic uh, metal shells and three spherical Gaussian surfaces of radii R, 2R and 3R, all with the same center. Uh, the uniform charges on the three objects are ball is having charge Q, smaller sphere is having charge 3Q, larger sphere is having charge 5Q. So Q, 3Q and 5Q, radii are R, 2R and 3R. Rank the Gaussian surfaces according to the magnitude of the electric field at any point on the uh, surface greatest first. Okay, so what do we have here? We have a few things. We have a metallic ball here. This is having a charge of uh, Q. Okay, this has a charge of Q. Then we have a metallic uh, shell. This is the metallic shell. This one here. And this one has a charge of uh, charge of 3Q. Okay, so this has a charge of 3Q. And then we have another one. This one is the shell. Another metallic shell. This one has a charge of 5Q. Okay. This one has a charge of 5Q. Then this one is a Gaussian surface, Gaussian uh, uh, sphere with a radius of R. Another Gaussian sphere concentric with a radius of 3R. Another one with a radius of... Uh, no, this one, second one has a radius of 2R. And third one, the bigger one, has a radius of 3R. So R, 2R and 3R. We have to rank the three Gaussian surfaces according to the electric field. Magnitude of the electric field at point on the Gaussian. So we can select this point, we can select this point on the Gaussian surface, we can select this point on the another Gaussian surface. Rank them. Now uh, from Gauss law in this chapter, while you do this chapter, you must be aware of a few things. Due to a point charge electric field is gamma Q divided by R square. Gamma is the electrostatic constant, 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0. Okay, 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0. I'm using gamma for that. Then for a uniformly charged shell, okay, uniformly charged shell. Again, you must have done that in this chapter, Gauss law. For points lying outside the shell, it behaves like a point charge located at its center. So for points lying outside the shell, it behaves like a point charge located at its center. So it behaves the same way as this one. So field is going to be same, gamma Q divided by R square. But this is only for outside. Outside means R must be greater or equal to capital R. Capital R is the radius of the shell. And inside the shell, inside the shell, field is zero. Inside the shell, field is zero. Now, this is what we have to use here. Okay, this is what we have to use here. Now, uh, when we consider the first one, when we consider the first uh, Gaussian uh, shell, it has only charge Q inside it. And this point we are considering, the point we are considering is lying inside this conducting shell and li lying inside this conducting shell. So field due to this one will be zero, field due to this one, this one will be zero. So there will be field only because of this point charge. Okay, only because of this point charge. So field at uh, this point, if it's only because of the charge Q, so in the first case, field is going to be gamma Q divided by R square, the bigger R, this R, R square, distance is capital R. So gamma Q, it has this charge Q. Okay, let's write the bigger Q. So gamma Q divided by R square. Then the second case, the second one, the second one, this one here, uh, this Gaussian uh, sphere here, it has this charge Q inside it, it has this 3Q inside it. So it's lying outside this spherical shell. So this uh, conducting shell, this charge shell will behave like a point charge. And we have one more there at the center Q. So in total we'll have Q plus 3Q is 4Q. But the third one, this uh, conducting shell is lying outside it. So it will not contribute anything to the field. So field contribution here with this Gaussian shell will be only because of this ch charge Q, which is the metallic ball at the center. And this sphere, this sphere, which is having a charge 3Q. 
so at the center we will have a total charge of 4 q we'll have a total charge of 4 q so field will be gamma times 4 q divided by now this one has a radius of 2 r 2 r so 2 r square so it becomes gamma q divided by r square gamma q divided 4 and 4 will cancel out 2 square is 4 then let's consider the third shell okay let's consider the third shell this shell here now this shell if you consider any point on this shell is lying outside the metallic ball so metallic ball will behave like a point charge located at its center so we have charge q at the center it is also lying outside this uh, uh, charged conductor charged uh, shell which is having a 3q charge so it will also behave like a point charge located at its center we already had Q at the center. Now this 3Q is also at the center. So we'll have 4Q at the center. Then this point is also lying outside this charged shell, which is having a charge of 5Q. So this will also behave like a point charge located at the center. So all the three are behaving like point charges at the center. So in total, we'll have charge of Q plus 3Q plus 5Q at the center. So field will be field will be in the third case field at the center will be gamma times q plus 3q plus 5q all of them are behaving like point charges at the center divided by total distance distance is 3r radius is 3r so divided by 3r square so this is gamma times 5 plus 3 is uh, 8 8 plus 1 is 9 9q divided by 3 square is 9 r square 9 and 9 cancels out so gamma q divided by r square gamma q divided by r square note all of them are having the same field gamma q divided by r square gamma q divided by r square gamma q divided by r square so all of them tie remember we had to rank the three gaussian surfaces according to the electric field magnitude of the electric field so all of them are having the same so all tie all tie okay so if we have proper understanding of gauss law then this is very simple okay